Hello, now I want to show you some changes I made to the Stegapi program and then also show you how to convert characters to a stream of bits in three languages, Python, Java, and C. In Stegapi now, it doesn't make that green image anymore. Instead, it takes an image that you give it and then it encodes a message in that image. And see if you can tell the difference. Here's that same image, but with the with a secret message encoded in it. Uh, of course, you can't tell the difference. Uh, now let's look at Stegapi and just see some of the differences. Um, the biggest difference is that when you create an image, you give it the message and the input file name and the output file name. So this is the original graphic, and this is the graphic with the message um, that's in there. Okay, there's some other changes in here, but you can look at them yourself on GitHub if you want to. Now, let me show you, back to our plan here, um, characters to bits in the three different languages. And here's the bits provider generator in Python, and it takes the message and gets each character out, gets the ASCII value for that, and then for each of the eight bits, it sees if the bit is on and then yields a one or a zero. And in Python, generators are really convenient for this sort of thing because you use them and you say, give me the next one, give me the next one, give me the next one. But inside the generator here, there's a nested loop. And without a generator, that's a little bit harder to do. All right, let's look now at how to do this in Java. And um, I have to admit that when Scala came out, I worked on Scala programming for about 10 years and didn't keep up with all the latest Java features. So let me know if there's a better way to do this. I created an iterator called Bits Provider. Um, but let's start with the main, the main uh, part of the program. This is the main class. It has a main method in it. And it instantiates a Bits Provider with this message, ABC. And... Then it, as long as um, there's a bit available, then we call next to get that bit, and then we print it out. So um, let me run this one. Here's a result. These are the binary representations of the ASCII codes for A, B, and C. Um, might be time to show you this picture now. A, B, and C is what we're starting with. And here's a table of um, the ASCII values. And um, for A, B, and C, in decimal, they're 97, 8, and 9. But in binary, they're these. We're using all eight bits, so that's why there's a leading zero in front of these. So the process is take each character one by one and get the ASCII code for it, and then get the binary representation of that, and then construct this continuous stream of the bits of all the characters. And that's what's happening. And you can see that after every eight bits, we do a system out print line to get a new line. Otherwise, you would just see the stream of bits all in one line. I wanted to make it easier for you to see that this is A, this is B, and this is C. Let's look at the bits provider. That implements an iterator, which in Java is something that has a method called has next and a method called next. And you can use it in a loop to get things as long as there are more things to get. And when you instantiate it, you give the string, and then we take the bytes out of the string and save that into source bytes, which is an array of bytes. Uh, also, when the object is constructed, we create these two fields, character position and bit position, and we set them to zero. You'll see how they're used in a minute. The has next method, as you can see from the interface, disc, uh, doc comments, returns true if the iteration has more elements. Returns true if next would return an element. So as long as the current character position is less than the length of the source bytes, then we indicate that we have something uh, remaining. 
And then uh, most of the work is done in next here. And the bit pause just goes from zero to seven, which is eight different values. Imagine going from left to right in that stream of bits in the picture here. So bit pause, um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the power is seven minus the bit pause. So the power two to the seventh is this. So, and the bit pause is zero. So uh, seven minus the bit pause, uh, seven minus the bit pause gives you the power. So two to the seventh is, represents this bit. Okay, then we compute the result by looking at the character at the current position and um, shifting one over to the left by the power, which essentially gives us a way to start here, shift over by, in this case, seven, and examine this bit. So this is a way to see if that particular bit is turned on. And if the bit is turned on, then the Boolean result is true. And then, uh, and we're going to return the result. But in the meantime, we need to see if we've reached the right edge. So if the, if the bit pause gets over to here, then it's time to advance to the next character and move the bit pause back to zero. And that's what's happening here. We increment the bit pause and then see if it's now greater than seven. And if it is, we reset it to zero and then we advance to the next character. That's how we're doing it in Java. Now let's see how we do it in C. And this is not C++, it's old style C and I'm using Xcode. I'm not very familiar with Xcode, but I was able to make something and make it run. Let's start by looking at the main function here. Here's the message as a, mess, as a character pointer, ABC. And we need to know how many bits we're going to generate, and so that's the length of the message times eight, because there are eight bits in a, in a byte or a character. And then we call this function above to get the bits of the message, and we have this bit values, which points to that area of memory. And then we have a loop where we go over for every bit, and if the bit is turned on, we print a one, otherwise a zero. And this is really hard to see down here. Um, maybe I'll just... Uh, copy it and paste it into text edit so you can see what it says. Okay. There, that's the output from that program that's really difficult to see down here. These are the binary representations of the ASCII values of A and B and C. Okay, so that's the main routine. Now, how does the other part work? Now, um, in pure C, not C++. I don't think we have things like iterators or generators. So what this program does is just allocates storage, allocates memory for this um, array of binary values. Uh, so let's go through that. We get the length of the message, save it in this message length, and then we allocate storage, malloc creates storage on the heap, which is a certain area of memory available to a C program. And we need the message length times eight, because they're eight bits per byte. And then we have a, a index that tells us where we are in the output that we're making. And we start that at zero. Then we go through for each character in the message, and we get the ASCII value of that character. And then here, um, I'm going, I'm generating the powers directly, starting with seven and going down to zero. Uh, I guess I could have been more consistent with the other programs and gone from zero to seven and then computed the power from that. Um, but we need to know whether, and you might recognize this from the other code, we take the one and we shift it left by the power and we test and see if that bit is on in the ASCII value. And if it is, we... Uh, evaluate to a one, otherwise a zero, and then we put that one or a zero in the bit values um, area of memory at the current position, or what we call the next bit pause. And then after we 
find the place to store that one or zero, we increment next bit pause. That's what the plus plus does. And then at the end of the loop, we return the bit values. That was the changes to Stegapy and an example of converting from characters to bits in three different languages.